Have you ever noticed this while playing a pixel art game? Here in Blasphemous, if I stop moving my character, you can see the background and other textures don't move smoothly to a stop. Instead, they slowly snap into position. This clunky pixel snapping, as I'm going to call it, isn't noticeable when standing still and is much less noticeable when running, but once your character starts to move or comes to a stop, you can see the textures grind to a halt. This effect is especially noticeable in an area like this with multiple objects in the foreground and background because because they all snap into position at different times. And it's not just blasphemous. This effect can be found in almost every pixel art game that uses upscaling. Here's the same effect happening in Mamadora's Moonlit Farewell, for example. At some point, I decided to make my own pixel art game. So I got some pixel art assets online that I could use to test, put it in Unity, set up my game, and instantly I had a huge problem. You see, Blasphemous has quite dense pixel art, meaning there are a lot of pixels on the screen. But my pixel art was not as dense as Blasphemous, and as it turns out, the less dense the pixel art, the stronger the pixel snapping effect. I didn't even have any parallax set up, so there's no objects in the foreground and background, which would make it even more noticeable. But even here with everything at the same level, you can see especially on the cage that everything is just snapping. So what causes this pixel snapping effect? Well firstly, you need to know that there are two ways to create a pixel art game. The first way achieves what I call true pixel art and is done by rendering your game at a low resolution and scaling it up, literally stretching it out to fit the screen. If I go into Photoshop and create a single pixel, and then upscale this whole thing by a factor of 4 or 400%, you can see that that one single pixel has now become a square of 16 pixels, 4 pixels tall and 4 pixels wide. I am rendering my game at 480 by 270, which means that if you were to count the pixels, there would be 480 going across and 270 going down. And we can multiply those numbers together to find out that there are 129,600 pixels in total. Now if I scale this whole thing up by a factor of 4, every single one of those 129 1600 pixels becomes a square of 16 pixels just like that single pixel in Photoshop and as a result my game goes from being 480 by 270 to 1920 by 1080 which is also the resolution of a normal monitor so it fills my screen. I can then prove this is pixel perfect because I can draw a grid with 480 vertical lines and 270 horizontal lines which is the resolution of the game before upscaling and you will see that every single pixel that was upscaled to a square of 16 pixels now aligns perfectly perfectly to this grid, which is why I call it true pixel art. This has some fantastic implications. Anything you place in your game will be forced into pixel perfection. So if I put a square in my game and rotate it, you can see when I press play it becomes pixelated, as does this physics-based chain that the player can interact with. Even lighting becomes pixelated. The other way to create a pixel art game is what I'm going to call imperfect pixel art, which is not necessarily a bad thing. This is achieved by rendering at the monitor's resolution, so no upscaling required. This means that some pixels could be bigger than other pixels, pixels can rotate and pixels won't align perfectly to a grid. This means that, as opposed to the true pixel art method, our rotated square isn't pixelized, and neither is the swinging chain, nor the lighting. One of my favourite games of all time, Inmost, uses the imperfect method. You can tell it's not upscaled because the lighting falls off smoothly instead of being pixelated, some pixels rotate, and the pixels don't all align perfectly to a grid. And this is why I mentioned that imperfect pixel art is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean look how incredible Inmost looks. The regular lighting complements the pixel art style beautifully. I also mentioned earlier that the pixel snapping effect can be found in almost every pixel art game that uses upscaling, but it's not upscaling itself that causes the effect. Here is my game using the imperfect pixel art method, so it's not being upscaled, and every frame I'm setting my camera's position to the position of the player character so that the camera follows them. If I play this now, you can see that it looks like a game from the 1980s because the camera is following the player so rigidly. So we fix that by adding smoothing to the camera. And now, when I play this again, you can see that the player runs ahead of the camera and the camera takes a second to catch back up, and it looks much smoother. However, if we set the game up using the true pixel art method as I have it now, you can see that it works fine when the camera has no smoothing, but once we add the smoothing, we get the pixel snapping effect. So we get pixel snapping when the game is upscaled and the camera has smoothing. But why? 
Well, when the game is upscaled, everything is forced to move in increments of 4 pixels. Or if we bring our grid back from before, one line at a time. You can see if I select the knight here in Photoshop, I have to drag him 4 pixels across so that the pixels align to the grid, because in the game the pixels are forced to align to this grid. So the knight's pixels will never end up halfway between the lines like this. When we don't have any smoothing on the camera, the camera is also moving in 4 pixel increments, because its position is being set to the player's position, which is moving in 4 pixel increments. So let's visualise this. On our grid, I have a red circle that represents the camera's position, and with no smoothing, it moves 4 pixels at a time, or one line across in the grid, but the camera is not like all the other objects in our game. It just controls what part of the game world is rendered and shown to us when we press play, which means we can smooth the camera's movement, or lerp it, and the camera will be able to move in sub-pixel positions, or in between these lines in our grid. But since all the other objects can't move in sub-pixels, they can only move 4 pixels at a time, those objects are rounded to the nearest 4 pixel position, and this difference between the camera and objects is what causes the pixel snapping effect. Now with the pixel density I had decided on for my game, the pixel snapping was unbearable, but I didn't want to increase it because the more dense the pixel art, the longer it would take to make. Just look at the detail from this one tiny area in Blasphemous. It would take me a thousand years to make a game like this on my own. And even with Blasphemous's pixel density, you can see the pixel snapping in this area is particularly bad. My other option to get rid of snapping was to use the imperfect pixel art method Method, but I wanted physics based puzzles and objects in my game, like this swinging chain, and I wanted pixel art lighting. I desperately wanted the pixel perfect benefits of true pixel art, and the smooth pixel movement of the imperfect method. I would do anything to have it, but no matter how many YouTube videos I watched, no matter how many Reddit and Unity forums I scoured, no matter how many GitHub repos I cloned, I couldn't even slightly improve the pixel snapping. And just as it seemed impossible, I found a singular ray of hope. I watched a devlog from Arth Official on YouTube where they fixed the pixel snapping problem by making an offset equal to the distance between the camera's position and the nearest grid line, and then they move the whole screen according to that offset. Unfortunately, their fix required modifying Unity's universal rendering pipeline, and they said it was too messy and complicated to provide a tutorial. I tried, but at this point I was only beginning my game dev career, and I was coding like a monkey on a typewriter, doing random things until finally I produced a line of code that worked. So, I began to look outside of Unity and I found one more video. This was my golden goose, an actual tutorial by Pixter to fix pixel snapping but it was a tutorial for Godot, and I had been learning Unity until now. But this one problem was enough to make me learn an entire new game engine, although I had one last roadblock. It was an old tutorial for Godot 3, and I wanted to use Godot 4, since it added a lot of new features that I needed to build my game, and it did not work for Godot 4. The tutorial was also to have the camera follow the mouse cursor, not the player, so I had some work to do. The reason that this is possible in Godot is that Godot has viewports, and I learned from the Pixter tutorial that you can put your game scene in a viewport, and then to move the screen by the offset, we can use a shader on the viewport that moves the viewport by an offset, and then we can pass in that offset from a script. The part from the tutorial that didn't work in Godot 4 was the script to smoothly move the camera and calculate the subpixel offset, so I had to do that myself. This offset is literally just the distance between the camera's position and the nearest pixel perfect position, which is the nearest grid line. Then we just send that offset to the shader so it moves the viewport by that amount, and then since we're moving the whole screen, I'm rendering an extra pixel on all sides so that I don't get any black bars, and this is the result. Smooth moving pixels with no snapping at all. And this is still being upscaled, so anything we place in here will become pixel perfect. Just look at these two versions side by side. On the left, I have my game upscaled with the camera smoothing enabled, and on the right, I have my game upscaled with camera smoothing enabled and the sub-pixel fix. The difference is truly night and day. In my opinion, this method of pixel art is the gold standard, and I hope to see more indie games using it going forward. This new frontier of smooth pixel perfection also led me down a road of implementing parallax and a new custom lighting system that would work with this setup. Subscribe to see how that went in future videos. Also, the project files for this subpixel fix are up on my Patreon if you want them early, but I will be making a tutorial video within a week or two, so subscribe if you're interested in that. Thanks for watching. As always, leave a like if you enjoyed, and let me know in the comments what other games have you noticed this pixel snapping effect in.